Welcome back, everyone. Today is a special day, not only because it's a Tuesday and your boy, you know, you know what happens on Tuesday, <laughs> but we're talking about a phone that really means a lot to me. This was probably the most important phone I've ever owned in my life. Now, I use an iPhone 11 Pro, you know, I've been using iPhones as a main device for a long time, but it wasn't always that case. I used this Nexus 4, not this specific one, but I used a Nexus 4 for about almost two years. It was about a year, a little bit over a year and a half. And I can tell you this, my experience with that phone was so good. There were a lot of conflicting things that I would read online. A lot of people, a lot of reviewers would hate on it, say this, that. I personally, in my own experience, had a really good time owning this device. And I think I used it, I think, I don't remember, I think it was like 2014 or 2015 I used it. And then I eventually upgraded to like a some other phone Oh, and LG G2, that was a phone I bought after this one. But this Nexus 4 means so much to me. And honestly, the history of this phone is so crazy. And I still look at it and I'm actually so happy that I'm actually able to use one. So this thing came out in 2012. And, you know, 2012, I think was a tremendous year for phones. We had the iPhone 5, the Nexus 4, some other phones out there as well. The Galaxy S3, I think, came out the same year or the year after or something. Regardless, this phone was a killer device. And when it came out, it didn't cost a thousand dollars. It didn't cost a crazy amount. It was a very cheap priced phone for a device that actually felt a little bit better than a lot of the competition. Now on the front, you do have a 4.7 inch IPS panel. And honestly, the screen really wasn't that bad and it still is pretty good. Again, this thing came out in 2012. And I'll tell you this, back in the day when I had my Nexus 4, I always felt bad because I wanted to get a Galaxy S3 because that thing had an OLED panel. But looking at it now, I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal and I'm glad I kept my Nexus 4. This thing is an insane device and I think it looks better than a lot of the competition back in 2012 too. Now you do have a little bit of bezel around the display which is totally okay, it's not that big of a deal. And I just realized this but the resolution of this is 768 by 1280 which is kind of similar to the iPhone SE 2020 that just came out. This phone came out 8 years ago and it kind of has almost the same panel as the iPhone SE 2. That's pretty crazy in my opinion but it's totally okay. On the bottom micro USB port and on the back that this was one of the biggest things about the Nexus 4 was the glass back. Now it did have a speaker on the bottom right which wasn't that great but it's okay. But you had a glass back which back in this time in 2012 a lot of the phones still had removable plastic backs. We had phones like the Note 3, the S3, even the S4. The only phone that was kind of close to this in my opinion may have been the iPhone 5 which kind of had a glassish back but it was mostly aluminum just glass on the top and bottom. But this one in my opinion just looked so good. It felt so good and the back even had this little like gradient look to it which was so neat and so unique to it that if you held it to the sun on some occasions it would kind of glisten back. And you had the camera that was like englossed and it engraved inside of the glass underneath it. So it didn't protrude at all. And this phone on the back, I mean, if you even looking at it now, you can see in the video, it still looks like an extremely premium phone in my opinion. If it wasn't for the huge bezels on the front, I think most people wouldn't even care. And even when this phone screen is off, you can't really tell that big of a difference if I'm being honest. So that was one reason why I kept this phone for so long. Even when I could have gotten an iPhone, whatever. I, I, actually, at that time, I was kind of broke, so I couldn't really get a new one. But this phone, regardless, I think design-wise, is still pretty much timeless. I put this in the same probably price. I put this in the same leak as kind of like a Nexus 5 and a Nexus 6, but this one I think looked better than those two combined as well. Now one of the best things about this device, hands down, were the software updates. This thing started off on Android 4.2, it did get Android 5.1. Now I still have Android 5.1 on this specific one and I think it's great, but the best advantage of the Nexus 4 lineup is the custom ROMing aspect of it. You can easily find any custom ROM out there and put it on your Nexus 4, which is so cool. The rooting process of this thing was great. And for about a year and some change when I owned my Nexus 4, I didn't custom ROM it or root it. This was back in like 2014, 2015. I think that's when like Android and Marshmallow came out or something, I don't remember. And when the Nexus 4 officially got Android Lollipop, I still waited a couple months before I went and upgraded. And even when I did update, I didn't even go to stock Android Lollipop. That's when I actually rooted this phone and then I custom ROMed it. But I had this thing rooted for a while and I used the exposed framework, whatever it's called, to install some cool tweaks. 
And there was one tweet called Obsanity Amulet or something like that. And what it did was it made the screen look so much cooler. It made it look actually warmer, but it looked cooler. And I did that and it made the screen look so good. And that really prolonged the life of it because I really wanted a phone with an AMOLED display. And even though it was still an IPS, it was kind of like true tone on this phone, which made it look kind of better in my opinion. And I did that by having a root on my phone and a lot of other exposed framework things. I put it on my device and then I eventually upgraded to a custom ROM, which was really, really cool. But even with that custom ROM, I had a bunch of random issues. I don't know what I, inst maybe it was a lineage. I don't even think lineage was out. I honestly don't remember, but whatever I installed it on, it was great. It was great. I loved it. Even though it was buggy, it was, I still had a great experience with it. And that is one reason why the Nexus 4 is still an awesome device. It's because of the custom ROMs out there. You can easily find any custom ROM out there and install it, which is so cool. So that pretty much covers it up in terms of the software. Now hitting on the performance aspect. For a 2012 phone, I'm going to say this outright. I'm surprised that this thing even turns on and still performs even decently. This thing has the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro. I've never heard of it before. A quad-core CPU and an Adreno 320 GPU. This thing had two different models with two gigs of RAM each. Now the base model was eight gigs of storage. The top tier model was 16 gigs of storage. I know it's really bad. Google still kind of does the same thing in my opinion. But regardless, it still performs and it still turns on. Now, like I said, I have Android Lollipop on here, and you know I'm messing with it right now as I speak on this microphone, and it's really not that slow. It's actually super smooth smooth surprisingly and here's the crazier thing i've had a lot of phones that came out in even 2013 2014 phones like my galaxy s5 even my galaxy s6 on stock aren't even as smooth as this thing you know and this thing actually still feels really responsive too now performance in games and stuff is gonna be okay like it's not gonna be the best thing ever now this thing since it is kind of on like an out you know outdated version of software a lot of the apps a lot of different things like that aren't necessarily going to be you know the most up to date you might have to download like older versions of apps but i still think it's totally okay you know so what i will tell you though is that you know if you're going to use this phone as a main phone i would not recommend it at all i don't think you're going to have a good experience and i think you know you might find yourself complaining but what i'll tell you is if i had to use this as a main device, if I had to go out of my way to use it and all that stuff, I think I would be perfectly okay with it. I don't think I would be complaining about it too much. Like I would complain about it a little bit, but I would also have to understand that this is an older device. And if I want to get the latest and greatest, I would go get a Pixel 4 XL or something like that. So I think the best way to explain it is for sure the Nexus 4's performance isn't the best, but it's surprisingly impressive for a 2012 phone for sure. So I think that pretty much covers up in the performance aspect. Now moving on to probably the worst aspect of the Nexus 4, even when I owned it, it was horrible. And that is the camera. So when I owned my Nexus 4, okay, I had a completely cracked back. The back of my Nexus 4 was messed up. It were, there were like pieces falling off but the camera module was hanging out too. So that my camera, so my camera was even worse than the stock Nexus 4, but this camera really isn't that great. You know, I mean, if you're in good lighting, like I'm sure you can take a pretty decent photo, but even when I'm looking at it now, like it is <laughs> such a sloppy camera. It's, and I think it has a lot to do with the glass being over the camera. So, you know, you can easily smudge it up and stuff. So, you know, you can get a lot of fingerprints all over that camera, which is okay. You know, things happen. It's totally okay. So you had an eight megapixel camera in the back. You can only do 1080p. Totally fine with me. I don't really care front camera 1.3 megapixel camera and you know i'm not gonna hate on it too much because like i said it is an older device if you want to get the latest and greatest you can easily go and purchase it but i will tell you on top of that phones like the galaxy s3 that was one of the biggest advantages for going into that type of you know phone it was because of that camera sensor so i feel like a galaxy s3 camera is held up better than a nexus 4 camera but still perfectly fine i don't really care either way I'm not using this phone as a main phone anymore, but definitely I, I didn't really complain too much when I was using it anyway. So now ending it off with the battery life, you guys already know this thing had a 2100 million power battery. Now, back in the day when this thing was like the whatever it was, you know, still breaking news and stuff. That was one of the probably most conflicting things about it. But this thing had wireless charging, which this was, I think, one of the first Android phones to bring wireless charging, which is so impressive because this phone wasn't an insanely you know crazy priced phone but it still brought one of those cool features which is so impressive now in my opinion you know it kind of goes both ways i would honestly have rather have a bigger battery than lack of wireless charging but it's still perfectly fine and this battery life on this specific nexus 4 really isn't even that bad which is pretty surprising to me so what i will tell you though is that for sure battery life wasn't that great overall but i had pretty decent battery life when i was using it back in like 2014 2015 so I think that really pretty much covers it up too. And honestly, we're at the end of the video. 
I will tell you the Nexus 4 means so much to me and I'm not even just saying that just for the sake of this video like I actually enjoyed using it for as long as I did. This was one of the longest phones I've ever used in my life and for a reason you know I enjoyed it a lot I'm about to cry at the end of this video <laughs> but the Nexus 4 is a beloved phone I love it so much if any of you guys are still using it I love you and, and probably I will never feel a way about a phone that I did with the Nexus 4 if I'm being honest so that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button that means so much but definitely hit that subscribe subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so i mean so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel more importantly than everything else love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then